Hello, this is Grandin Gill, and I'm a professor at the University of South Florida, and uh, this is the fourth in a series of videos that looks at sort of typical organizations uh, of papers uh, to accomplish different types of research. Um, this particular video is um, on exploratory case studies, and uh, the third video in the series was on case studies that are used for testing or qualifying or expanding theory, which have objectives a little bit more like what you would find in your typical empirical research. So this video deals with exploratory research, which is generally focused on creating new theory. Associated with each of these videos is a word template uh, using the Informing Science Institute's uh, uh, paper uh, structure, and uh, that contains additional information. Just as a quick review, in part two I introduced what I refer to as the LIFO structure for creating a paper, and I was given uh, an introduction to this structure from my colleague uh, G.J. Devreda, who uh, deserves all the credit for it. But what it basically notices is that the typical paper structure uh, consists of parts that sort of wind up the paper and then unwind the paper. And we tend to unwind in the reverse order of the uh, winding, so it's basically like a last-in, first-out stack. In practical terms, this means that if you start with an introduction, you're going to raise issues uh, that position the paper and are resolved and uh, discussed in the conclusion. Uh, your background section, which differs according to the type of paper is going to get resolved in your destruct discussion section, and this is where you talk about the contribution. Uh, where a method section is appropriate, uh, the method section is resolved when you present your results, and we call this how you execute the research. And in almost all the paper structures that I will be discussing, and there are six in the series, uh, we will use this basic approach. Now this approach um, is very formulaic. If you've written lots of research papers, uh, you can come up with your own approach to presenting the papers, but this series is really designed for people who have not written a lot of research papers and are looking for a reasonably mechanical way of uh, getting started. Because exploratory case studies uh, are used for theory building. You know, if you're an experienced uh, author, uh, there are a lot of different structures you could use. So what we'll show here is the type of structure that you might use um, if you're going to follow the LIFO method. So once again, uh, the LIFO method, uh, you introduce why you're doing this research in the introduction. Um, uh, sort of the, the key reasons, the stakeholders, um, you know, who should care, and then in your conclusions you are going to uh, resolve uh, the questions you raised in the introduction. Now in the case of uh, an exploratory case study, your background sections uh, may be somewhat limited. Uh, you're going to have to present the problem context in a relatively general way, and of course this will later be resolved in your discussion when you talk about the implications for stakeholders. And then you will probably have some sort of literature review. Now what's important is if you're doing an exploratory case study, uh, what you're really trying to um, do is demonstrate that the literature either does not really have a theory that could be used to explain the particular case study or possibly set of cases you're looking at, or that existing theory is inadequate. If you're trying to test theory, of course, you would use the uh, third template in this series, which specifically deals with using case studies for testing purposes. So. In your uh, literature review, uh, 
it may not be as systematic and thorough as other literature reviews. What you're basically trying to do is make the point that theory is needed for the particular uh, topic or question that you're studying. Now then you have the method section. And again, unlike uh, the testing uh, case study research, uh, your method section is likely to be fairly limited. And the, the reason for this is that when you're uh, using case studies for systematic testing, the way R.K. Yin um, recommends uh, using case studies, and uh, his book on case study research is, of course, the classic in the social sciences. It's also one of the most heavily referenced uh, publications in the entire social sciences. But um, you know, he's mainly focused on systematic research, whereas when you're dealing with exploratory case studies, in many cases, what you're trying to do is present a novel situation. And chances are you knew the situation was novel before you um, selected the case site. And so really your method is going to perhaps talk about how you gather data, but um, when it comes to how the case site was selected, it was because it looked interesting. Now, the narrative section in a um, exploratory case study research project is probably going to tell the story. And um, I recommend just you know, telling pretty much the entire story in the narrative without a whole lot of interruptions. Uh, there are a lot of case research papers where um, you have the narrative uh, and then discussion, more narrative, more discussion, and that may be okay too. It really depends upon the situation. But one of the things that is a real virtue of exploratory uh, case studies is you can make them very, very interesting. And this is important because if you think about the articles that get communicated to practice, Nearly all of them are built around stories. Uh, in many cases, the theory is an afterthought, and the stories are what people actually remember. So, as a consequence, um, the focus here is on telling a good story, and, and this is probably more true about this type of research than any other type of research. When you get to the discussion section, what you're going to do is talk about the implications for the stakeholders, and this will go back to the uh, problem context. Um, you may also um, introduce uh, new theory. And what you're trying to do here, and the value add here, is that you're taking the story and framing it in more general terms. Uh, so that it might be applied elsewhere. Uh, so you might have lessons learned. You might have diagrams that show, um, you know, what happened during the case. Uh, there's a whole variety of things you could do there. Um, as I've mentioned before in a number of presentations, uh, I recommend talking about the limitations of your research before you go into the conclusion, so you don't end up your paper uh, by outlining what you didn't do and what you'd like to do in the future. <laughs> or what you'd like to do if you had it to do over again. Um, so uh, one thing you probably don't need to mention is the fact that a single case is N of 1. Everybody knows that. And uh, if they're not convinced by your narrative, because your narrative is really the source of evidence, then uh, telling them something that they already know is not going to really add a great deal of value to the paper. Lots of ways to do exploratory case studies. Uh, and what I would say is if you are actually trying to use a technique like grounded theory, it's better to focus on organizations that are specifically designed for theory building, whatever the evidence source is. Uh, I think the idea of an exploratory case study is that you really want to make it interesting so the reader gets excited by it. Well, thank you for listening, and feel free to look at the other five videos in this series. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is grandon, that's G-R-A-N-D-O-N, at usf.edu.
Once again, grandin at usf.edu. Thank you very much for watching.